All right, I'm picking up at the top of 862, and Penelope is still talking to her husband, who she doesn't know is her husband. Ruses served my turn to draw the time out. First, a close-grained web I had the happy thought to set up weaving on my big loom in the hall. I said that day, young men, my suitors, now my lord is dead. Let me finish my weaving before I marry, or else my thread will have been spun in vain. It is a shroud I weave for Lord Laertes, when cold death comes to lay him on his fire. The country wives would hold me in dishonor if he, with all his fortune, lay unshrouded. I reached their hearts that way, and they agreed. So every day I wove on the great loom, but every night by torchlight I unwove it. And so for three years I deceived the Achaeans. But when the seasons brought a fourth year on, as long months waned and the long days were spent, through impudent folly in the slinking maids, they caught me, clamored up to me at night. I had no choice then but to finish it. And now, as matters stand at last, I have no strength to evade a marriage, cannot find any further way. My parents urge it upon me, and my son will not stand by while they eat up his property. He comprehends it, being a full man, a man full grown, able to oversee the kind of house Zeus would endow with honor. So she tried to put off marrying them by saying that she had to weave a shroud, a, a cloth to basically put over her husband's coffin if, if he were to make it home. And as she's weaving it during the day, she takes it out at night. So she's making it seem like it's taking her a really long time to delay them. But eventually they find out and she can't, she can't keep that up anymore. The test of the bow. Resigned to ending the suitor's reign over her home, Penelope cries herself to sleep that night, dreaming of the husband she believes is lost forever. The next day, the suitors return to the hall more unruly than ever. Penelope appears carrying the huge bow that belongs to Odysseus. Her maids follow, bearing 12 iron axe heads. Penelope has a proposition for the suitors. So at this point, she still doesn't know that her husband is, is home. My lords, hear me, suitors indeed. You commandeered this house to feast and drink in day at night. My husband being long gone, being long gone, long out of mind, you found no justification for yourselves, none except your lust to marry me. Stand up then. We now declare a contest for that prize. Here is my lord Odysseus's hunting bow. Bend and string it if you can. Who sends an arrow through iron axe house sockets, 12 in line? I join my life with his and leave this place my home, my rich and beautiful bridal house forever, to be remembered, though I dream it only. One by one, the suitors try to string the bow and all fail. Only Antinous delays his attempt. In the meantime, Odysseus steps outside with the swineherd Eumaeus and Philodius another faithful herdsman, and reveals his identity to them. Odysseus returns to the hall and asks to try his hand at stringing the bow. Antinous sneers at this idea, but Penelope and Telemachus both insist he proceed. Telemachus orders the women to leave. Philodius locks the gates of the hall, and Eumaeus presents to Odysseus the great bow he has not held for 20 years. Uh-oh, guys. They've asked the, the women to leave. They've locked the doors. It's about to go down, guys. And Odysseus took his time, turning the bow, tapping it every inch for borings that termites might have made while the master of the weapon was abroad. The suitors were now watching him, and some jested among themselves. A bow lover, dealer in bows. Maybe he has one like it at home, or has an itch to make one for himself. See how he handles it, the sly old buzzard. And one disdainful suitor added this. May his fortune grow an inch for every inch he bends it. And I'm going to stop right here and we will pick up on the next video at the top of page 864.